Welcome to getting started with Tableau. You can download the datasets to follow along in your own copy of Tableau. This is the start screen. Here, we can connect to new data, connect to saved data sources, or open recently used workbooks. In the Connect pane, we can see the wide variety of data sources that Tableau connects to natively. For this video, we'll connect to the global Superstore data available for download. The Superstore data is an Excel file that looks like this. The data is shaped like a database table. The first row contains the column headers. This dataset contains transactions of customers purchasing specific products. Let's go back to Tableau Desktop and choose Connect to Excel. Navigate to the file on your machine and double click to open it. Now we're on the data source page. From here, we can choose which sheets or tables we'd like to use. We can drag orders to the canvas. If we want to use more information from the same data source, we simply drag out the other table onto the canvas. Alternatively, if we have related data in another data source, we can create an integrated data source by adding a connection. Click Add, and here we'll connect to a text file of our returned orders, stored as a CSV. This file is also available for download. The sheet has automatically been added to the canvas, and here we can see our cross-database join. We're using flat files so you can follow along, but this could be a join on data from, say, Hadoop and Redshift. Cross-database joins are extremely powerful. Tableau Desktop automatically created a default join that we can see in the icon here. Clicking on the icon brings up the details of the join, and we can edit it directly. We'll choose a left join, so we get all the information from the orders table, and only bring in relevant return information for transactions that were returned. It's already based on order ID as the join clause, but we could change this if desired. The grid below allows us to verify what data we have. We can see we have a lot of nulls from the return database in yellow, which is great, we don't like returns, and all our order information is here in blue. In this grid view, we can do some basic metadata management. We can change row ID from a number to a string just by clicking on the icon. The order ID field in this dataset has multiple parts, the distribution center code, the year, and two additional codes. If we want to split this field and keep only the distribution center code, it's easy. Just click on the dropdown and select Custom Split. We'll split on a hyphen and just keep the first column. Let's rename this field Distribution Center. Next, we can decide if we'd like to connect live to the data or extract it. Connecting live is great when we have constantly changing data or when we want to leverage the high performance database we're connected to. Alternatively, we may choose to import data into Tableau's Fast Data Engine with an extract. This takes the data offline and allows us to minimize performance impact on critical systems, while still allowing for regular, scheduled refreshes to keep the data up to date. We'll leave it on Live and click on our Sheet tab down here at the bottom. Now we're connected to that data set. Let's see how easy it is to dive into our data. We simply drag the fields out. Let's bring Category to Rows, Segment to Rows, Quantity to Columns, Market to Columns, and let's bring Market to Color as well. It's that easy to create a visualization of how our sales are looking per category, customer segment, and market in terms of number of items sold we can quickly see that Africa is an emerging market for us. You'll notice that I brought in these fields from the data pane here on the left. It's broken up into dimensions and measures that represent the column headers in the Excel sheet. What are dimensions and measures? 
Dimensions are categorical fields. In this case, fields such as date, customer, and category. These are fields we want to slice and dice our numerical data by. Dimensions are often discrete. Discrete fields create labels in the chart and are color-coded blue in the data pane and in the view. Measures, on the other hand, are our metrics. They are the numbers we want to analyze. Measures are often continuous. Continuous fields create axes in the chart and their pills are color-coded green. Now, let's say we're interested in our total sales number. Let's place sales in the view. We can see that Tableau queries the database and returns a single result, giving us the sum of sales. This company has done a little over 12.5 million in sales. If we want to see this over time, we can drag order date to the top of the view. Tableau Desktop aggregates our dates at the year level. We can expand this with the plus symbol on the pill. Now we see both quarters and years in the view. To see how all of our Q1s are doing over the years, we can easily pivot the data so quarter is in front of year. Now we can compare how our growth looks by quarter across the years. Moving year to color shows us all the years on top of each other. If, instead of drilling down further, we want to change quarters to months, we can click on the pill to bring up the drop-down menu and change it. If looking at an average of sales is more useful than sum of sales, we can simply change that by using the drop-down menu on the pill and changing the aggregation to average. But let's undo that for now. What about if we want to know something like year-over-year -year growth? In Tableau Desktop, calculations like this are easy. Once again, clicking on the pills dropdown brings up the menu. And now going to Quick Table Calculation, we can see common business calculations as single-click options. Let's select year-over-year -year growth. If we still want to see our original sales, we can simply place it back in the visualization. Perhaps we want to have the year-over-year -year growth values appear in a tooltip instead of the graph. We can simply move it to the tooltip shelf. The tooltip provides additional information when we hover over marks in a view. For example, here in November of 2015, we see we're almost 50% up from the previous year. Let's drag category to the rows shelf. Now we can see which categories are doing well and when they were doing well. We can even leave comments. For example, we see there's a yearly dip in sales in July, but we rebound in the fall. We can leave an annotation by right-clicking, selecting Annotate, and adding a point annotation. This is a useful view. If we wanted to easily share this, we could now right-click, copy the image, and easily share it with other people in our organization. But for now, we'll double-click on the Sheet tab and rename this Sales Seasonality. What if we want the raw numbers behind this timeline? Tableau Desktop makes this very easy to do. We can right-click in the viz and copy the data, then paste it into Excel. This even includes that quick table calculation we did. Or we can simply right-click on the tab and select Duplicate as Cross Tab. We can easily swap our axes and move category to the rows shelf. Let's make this fit a little better. This looks nice, but I'm worried that profits for our office supplies weren't good during our fall sale and into the end of the year. Let's add profit to the cross tab to find out how we're doing. Adding profit to color gives us a clearer understanding of overall trends. These colors are a bit pale though, so let's edit how we display this. We'll click on color and click edit colors. Here we can choose from a wide variety of colors in the drop down menu. I like green gold. And we'll use step colors and make six of them. Let's change the mark type 
to square and turn on mark labels. Now we have a highlight table for profit. We can right click on the category pill and select show highlighter. If we select office supplies, we can see that the fall of 2015 is dark green, so our profits for these months are going strong. Great! Hovering over these categories in the highlighter, we can quickly see that although our fall profits are doing well in technology and office supplies, furniture doesn't have that same dark green upswing in profit. Is this happening across all stores? Let's find out. We'll double click on the Sheet tab and rename the Sheet Cross tab and create a new sheet. We know that furniture's profits are bad and we think this may vary regionally, but we don't necessarily know the best way to view the data. Tableau Desktop provides a simple tool called Show Me to help in cases where we know the data we want to look at, but don't know how to create an effective view. Show Me contains a list of common chart types that can help you start your analysis. Note, it's possible to build an enormous variety of charts in Tableau. Show Me is the one-click options, not a comprehensive list of possibilities. Let's see Show Me at work by selecting different dimensions and measures while holding down the control key. We're curious about our sales and how they're doing in different countries. Notice how different chart types come available based on what measures and dimensions we've chosen. Symbol Map looks like a good choice for these fields. Let's also add in State. We can increase the size of these dots by clicking on the Size shelf. Let's also adjust the transparency and add some borders. We'll hide the size legend and let's color these states by profit. Note that we can do a geographic search right here. If we want to see how profits are doing in a certain location, we can navigate right to it. Let's unpin to zoom back out. Now, we're a global company, and there's that dip in sales in July. Is that because of an action of ours driven from headquarters, or is that a seasonal effect? We could tell by breaking up our sales over time by hemisphere, but we don't have that field in the data. However, we can create that custom territory ourselves directly in the map. Let's right click and duplicate this sheet so we can leave our original view intact. We can simplify this view, stripping out everything but country. Next, we'll use the Lasso Select tool and Lasso Marks in the Approximate Southern Hemisphere. Note this is very rough. Clicking the paperclip icon in the tooltip creates a group for these countries, and we've made a new field in the data pane. If we go back to our Sales Seasonality tab and add this new field to Columns, it looks like we have less revenue overall from the Southern Hemisphere, but if we keep only this column, there's no clear evidence of a reverse seasonality. Good to know. We can leave this avenue of analysis and even delete this sheet and head back to our original map. We'll name it Global Sales and Profits. Earlier, we found that furniture had poor profits. To investigate this further, let's drag Category to the Filter shelf. We'll choose Furniture. To make this an interactive filter, we'll right-click this pill and select Show Filter. We can also modify filters by selecting their drop-down menu and choosing from the variety of options. We'll pick Single Value List. Now anyone can easily choose the category they're in, such as furniture or technology or office supplies. So we know that we have this problem with furniture, but what types of furniture are doing poorly? Let's create a new sheet and use Show Me to find out. Again, as we hold down Control and select the variables we're interested in, such as category, subcategory, and sales, 
we see Shomi making various suggestions. We can click through a few charts to see which one looks best. There's a hierarchical nature between category and subcategory in our data. In Tableau Desktop, we can create hierarchies simply by dragging and dropping fields on top of each other in the data pane. Let's drag subcategory on top of category, and we'll call this products. We can add product name to this hierarchy as well. Creating this hierarchy in Tableau Desktop only takes seconds and gives us full drill down capabilities. To sort these three categories by overall sales, we can click the appropriate sort button in the toolbar. Now we clearly see that technology has the most total sales. If we expand out to see subcategory, we see that these bars are not sorted. Let's sort again, this time using the quick sort from the axis, like so. Note that the order of categories stayed the same and we're only sorting the bars within each category. We can see the actual sales values by clicking the T button in the toolbar to turn on or off the mark labels. But again, how's profit? Let's place profit on color. We quickly see that tables are doing poorly from a profitability standpoint, despite how good the sales looked. Is this happening across all our markets? Let's place market here at the top. We quickly see that several markets seem to be having the same profitability problem when it comes to furniture. In this view, it's useful to note that we can group items together. We see in office supplies that several items have very small sales. We can select the headers and group them using the paperclip icon. To rename that row, right-click and select Edit Alias. Let's remove Market again and swap the axes. We can also right-click on the header for columns and hide that label. Let's call this sheet Sales by Subcategory and create a new sheet. We've seen that we have some profitability issues, and I have a hunch this may be due to shipping costs eating into our profits. Let's take a look at our profit and shipping numbers. We'll place profit on the rows shelf and shipping cost on the columns shelf. Tableau made a mark for the sum of profit and sum of shipping cost. If we put category on color, that first mark is broken out by category, and we wind up with three marks. If we add customer ID to detail, Tableau makes a mark for each customer for each category. These marks represent the total shipping cost and profit for all transactions within a single category for each customer. We could also fully disaggregate our data to plot each and every transaction at the record level. We can assign fields on the marks card to different roles. For instance, we can click on the color icon in front of category and change it to label. Or we could bring a field directly to the label shelf, such as subcategory. We can edit this label by clicking and then again next to text and modifying as we see fit. From here, we can see that we have a significant number of customers with low profits in various categories, so there's definitely something worth looking into. I wonder if these low profit orders were returned. We can bring returned to size. It looks like the mark with the highest shipping cost was returned, but not many of the low profit orders. Is there a relationship between our shipping cost and profit, as I think there might be? We can take off our labels and size to stay focused. Let's add a trend line. We can do this easily from the analytics pane. Selecting trend line and bringing it to the view. As shipping cost goes up, profits go up less sharply in furniture. But if we hover over this trend line, we can see that it's got a very low R squared, 
so it's not particularly meaningful. Let's drag off these trend lines. There are some pretty extreme low profit marks. We can quickly identify customers that are contributing to profit problems. Selecting these marks, we can look at the underlying data directly. Let's change category to be shape instead of color and change the color to gray. We'll call this sheet Customer Breakdown. We've created some insightful views with this data set. Now, we want to share this with our team and compile a dashboard. Multiple individual views can be combined into a single dashboard. Click the new Dashboard tab. We'll name it Sales Dashboard, and we'll size it to Laptop. All of our sheets are here on the left. Hovering brings up a preview. Let's drag our map into the view and place sales by subcategory and customer breakdown below it and add a dashboard title. On the interactive filter, note that when we click through the various categories, our map will change to reflect what we've selected. But what if we want all the visualizations in the workbook to change? We can select from the drop down menu and choose Apply to all using this data source. Now all of our sheets will update. But what if we want to drill down to details on the map? For instance, there's a low profit mark on the map in Texas. And we may want to see what makes up that mark. When we've clicked on the map, we can turn on the filter icon here in the border, and the entire map has now been turned into a filter. The bar chart and scatter plot have updated to show just this mark's information. What if we want to lead our audience through the path of our discovery of these profitability issues? Tableau Desktop offers a feature called Story Points that lets you assemble a series of specific views to walk the audience through an analysis. We can build a story by clicking the New Story tab. I'll make mine size to automatic. Just like with the dashboard, we can bring in any visualizations we'd previously made. Let's pull out Global Sales and Profit and name this point Overall, Our Profits Look Strong. We can easily add more content. Let's bring out our dashboard and size it to the story. And we'll turn off the title again. This viz is still fully interactive. We can filter and call out that mark in Texas. When we do, the word update appears above the navigator. Clicking update will save this state of the viz, so everyone will see exactly this information. We'll title this, but there are problem areas. This is one of the key aspects of story points the ability to snapshot a specific insight of a visualization while still maintaining interactivity. Now that we've gone from raw data to insight in this workbook, we want to think about how to distribute it to others. The most effective way to share a workbook is to publish it with Tableau Server or Tableau Online. Published workbooks are fully interactive, up-to-date, secure, and can be accessed by browser or mobile app. To publish, open the server menu and select Publish Workbook. We could also choose to publish the data source if we only want to publish the data itself for others to use. We can publish to a specific project, name the workbook, enter a description, tag the content, choose exactly what to publish, and control permissions. Once published, interacting with content is easy. And everything is still fully interactive, right in the browser. We can subscribe to content to get updates emailed on a set schedule, favorite content, and search and filter. With iOS and Android apps, 
Dashboards and data are securely available wherever you have a phone or tablet. Thank you for watching Getting Started. We invite you to continue with the free training videos to learn more. Welcome to this video on the Tableau interface. You can download the exercise workbook to follow along in your own copy of Tableau. We're currently on a sheet. Sheets are where we can build visualizations. Let's go over some of the various areas of the screen. At the top, we have the menus. The layout may look slightly different on a Mac. The menus contain a lot of powerful options. I recommend clicking through to see what options they contain. Below is the toolbar, with buttons like Save and Undo. Many of these buttons are contextual to what's going on in the sheet. For example, the Clear Sheet button is unavailable here because there's nothing on the sheet. If we have a sheet that has data, the Clear Sheet button is no longer grayed out, and if we click on the drop-down, we see there's options to clear specific aspects. The Logo button here brings us back to the Start experience, where we can access saved data sources, recently opened or pinned workbooks, etc. To the left of the screen is the Data pane. If we're on the Data tab, the top lists all open data sources, and depending on which one is selected, the fields from that data source are listed below, broken out by dimensions and measures. The data pane will also show any sets or parameters we may have. If we open the Map Layers or the Format pane, these temporarily cover the data pane. To get back to the underlying data pane, simply close whatever's on top of it. The data pane can also be minimized, like so, and then re-expanded. Down here at the bottom is the status bar. This shows the number of marks in the view, as well as other summary information. If we click to the Analytics tab, we can bring out pieces of our analysis directly as drag and drop elements. If they're not relevant to the type of view, certain elements will be grayed out, such as totals on a timeline. If we select something like a trend line, we can bring it out to any of these drop areas to control aspects of its properties, like model type and which measure it should apply to. New sheet tabs are found down here at the bottom. We can create sheets, dashboards, and stories with these tabs. We can do things like rename the sheets, duplicate sheets, copy formatting, and many other things. If the workbook has a lot of sheets, we can navigate easily with the controls in the bottom right corner. Finally, and perhaps most importantly, we have the shelves. A view can be built by dragging and dropping fields from the data pane directly onto the canvas or onto the shelves. Shelves are also sometimes referred to as cards. There's the columns shelf and the rows shelf up here, the pages shelf, the filter shelf, and the marks card. It's also possible to type directly into the columns or rows shelf if you know the field you want to use. The marks card is made up of several other shelves, each of which can have fields placed on them, and can be clicked on to edit their characteristics. Changing the mark type can change the shelves on the marks card, such as selecting shape brings up the shape shelf. Depending on the composition of the view, there can be multiple marks cards, one for each measure. Legends, such as for color, size, and shape, will automatically be created when a field is placed on the color, size, or shape shelf. However, legends can be removed by clicking on the menu and selecting Hide Card. To bring a legend back, right-click anywhere off the canvas itself, select Legend, and choose the one you want. If we're on a dashboard or story instead of a simple sheet, the layout changes a bit. Instead of the data pane on the left, we have the dashboard pane. The main area has a list of all the sheets available. There are also dashboard objects, such as images and text boxes. There's also sizing options, and the Device Preview helps design dashboards for mobile devices. 
Thank you for watching this video on the Tableau interface. We invite you to continue with the free training videos to learn more about using Tableau. Welcome to this video on ways to distribute Tableau visualizations. There are several ways to distribute the work done in Tableau Desktop that vary in security, interactivity, and data freshness. Images and PDFs do not contain the underlying data and are static, both for any interactivity and for data updates, because they're simply snapshots taken at a particular time. Workbooks, either packaged to contain the data or not, can be shared with others who have Tableau Reader or Tableau Desktop. Tableau Reader can view and interact with workbooks. Tableau Desktop can view and edit workbooks. Packaged workbooks may contain the underlying data and are not encrypted. Non-packaged workbooks require the recipient to have access to the same data source, as they do not contain the data themselves. Workbooks can also be published to Tableau Online or Tableau Server. These workbooks are secure, fully interactive, and can be scheduled to have data refreshes or maintain a live connection to the data source. Published workbooks can be accessed via any major web browser, as well as on mobile devices with the native Tableau app. Views can be exported by going to Worksheet, Export, and selecting Image, Data, or Crosstab to Excel. Selecting Image brings up options for what should be included, such as legends and titles, as well as the layout and the file can be saved in various formats. Dashboards and Stories can be exported by going to the Dashboard or Story menu and selecting Export Image. The Dashboard Image will be the current state of the dashboard. The Story Image will contain the current story point in its current state. The entire workbook or a specific sheet can be printed to PDF by going to File, print to PDF, and choosing the appropriate settings. Printing the entire workbook includes each story point. Workbooks in Tableau can be saved either as .twb files or .twbx files. .twb files are not packaged with the data itself. They contain just the information needed for the data connection and construction of the view. Opening a TWB file requires access to the same data source used to create it. TWBX workbooks are packaged. They contain the information in a TWB and can contain any data in local files, such as background information and custom geocoding. As noted previously, .TWBX files are not encrypted and have no data security. Opening a TWBX file with data shows all the underlying data. Packaged workbooks can be opened with Tableau Desktop or Tableau Reader. Opening a file in Desktop is the same experience as authoring a workbook. There is full functionality, including the ability to edit or create new worksheets from the data. Tableau Reader can open packaged workbook files to be viewed and preserves full interactivity of the workbook contents, including dashboards, stories, and any filtering or other actions, but the workbook cannot be edited. Finally, workbooks can be published to Tableau Online or Tableau Server. Workbooks that are published are secure, fully interactive via a browser or mobile device, and can be set up for automatic data refreshes or connected live to some data sources. For more information, please see the video on publishing workbooks to Tableau Server or Tableau Online. Thank you for watching this video on distributing Tableau content. We invite you to continue with publishing workbooks to Tableau Server or Tableau Online to learn more.